Today I'm going to be showing you how to do something that I think is quite useful very often um, for creating illustrations uh, in historical work, uh, in which you have a case where there is a route uh, or a path that's traveled uh, uh, or places that are connected in time with each other uh, that you wish to have lines connecting between them. I'm thinking along the lines of something like a pilgrim's path, uh, the route of a traveler, uh, where you don't necessarily know the exact roads that were traveled, or for illustration purposes, it's not necessary to show the exact roads traveled, uh, but you have a set of known points uh, that were traveled through. Uh, obviously, the more points that you have, the more accurate the path uh, will be. How do you do this in QGIS? Today we'll be using um, some raster data from Natural Earth Data. It's quite a large file to download, but once you have it, you'll get a nice uh, kind of background image uh, for what you're working on. Uh, it should come in a folder like this, including a TIFF file. And this can be added into QGIS by add raster layer, choosing the TIFF file, adding it and closing. And you can see we've got uh, this nice uh, uh, view of the world here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's use a, a European example here. It's taking a little bit of time to load here. Okay, our map has now loaded up. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And uh, the resolution isn't uh, great here. Uh, you can probably get higher resolution raster data uh, on your own. Uh, but let's pretend now that I would like to depict a route going from somewhere in Italy and across uh, the Alps uh, into the north. Um, in many cases, you'll have your own data already, perhaps uh, with some latitudes and longitudes, the name and the place, and a column for uh, the dates that they were traveled through. Uh, you could, for example, add that in uh, as a comma separated value list if it's been inputted in, for example, in Excel or Apple Numbers and saved as a CSV file. Um, but for the, ter for the purposes of today's exercise, I'm just going to create a temporary scratch layer to give you some example points on the map. What this allows it, me to do is to very quickly and easily um, draw some map uh, points on the map. Uh, due to a bug in QGIS 3.2, this crosshair is slightly off, so when you click, it'll produce a point kind of in the top left-hand corner of the circle. Uh, so let's draw a route across the map here, and imagine that these are points that you have represented in some historical source, for example. Uh, Okay, so uh, I'm going to save those points. And um, so here is my route. Uh, and now the first thing I wanna do is to link all of these points together. Um, before I do this, uh, I always think it's a good policy to, okay, I've closed the editing on the file is uh, is to save your layer, I'm going down to export and saying save features as, is to save your scratch file uh, as uh, something so that you always have uh, a shape file with what you're working on. A path point, so I'm gonna call it. And now I can turn off the original ones. To create the lines in between these points, I'm going to use something called the geoprocessing toolbox. 
And uh, you can see that I've already recently used the tool that we're going to be using. But basically, you're looking in this uh, processing toolbox for this tool called Points to Path. We have our points layer selected. I'm going to double click on Points to Path. And here it'll ask you for the input layer. And then the order that you want the points to be in. We only have uh, a, an ID layer here. This is another reason why I saved it as a shape file because the scratch file doesn't have uh, any kind of uh, ID uh, uh, field. Uh, if you have imported your data from a CSV file, uh, you may not have uh, the IDs in the order that you want the points to be. Uh, or, for example, you've got a large number of points and you have not yet sorted them by date. Uh, but if you have a date file, a date field, uh, which will be in this kind of format, like if it's 1523, the month of October, the third, if each of the dates contain this format, that's the default format um, that will be recognized uh, as such should you choose date for the order field. In our case, I've clicked on the map in the order that the, the route is, uh, 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 is depicted on the map, so I'm fairly confident that this is going to connect the lines in the, the correct order. I run this in the background and close it, and you can barely see it now, but if I turn off my points and I go to the properties for this layer, change my color to black, for example, and increase the width of my line, you can see I have uh, the root on the map. Okay, you could stop at this point and say, uh, you know what, that's good enough for my purposes. But uh, it's true also that most people probably didn't travel in exact lines, uh, straight lines between those points. Um, so if accuracy of the actual route is not that important and uh, uh, you don't mind uh, depicting the route in a more curved, uh, smoother way, there's a way to make the shape of this line look a little bit more organic and aesthetically pleasing on the map. The way to do this is to style this I'm going to put it up higher. Go into the properties for your paths. Under symbology, instead of doing a simple line, use something called the geometry generator. The type of geometry we're dealing with here is a line. And you've got this variable here. It's saying, what do you want me to do with the geometry of your line? Well, I would like to smooth the geometry of the line. And any whole number larger than one will work nicely here. If I choose three, for example, and I click apply, look what has happened to our line in the background. It has now become a curvier line. If I click OK out of here, I can go back. Actually, now I can style the line that was created by the geometry generator. And uh, I can make the stroke width a little bit larger. That makes it thicker. I could, for example, uh, style it to make it a little more like a path. Let's say we would like to have a dark dashed green line. That's not very readable, so let's try a different color. Let's, let's make it a dashed red line. And there we have uh, a nice path uh, depicted uh, on the map. We could make it even more curvier by using a number larger than three. One thing to keep in mind here is that technically now, our line may not be passing through each of the dots. That's especially true if you only have uh, a few points. Uh, it will curve uh, between the points in order to create a smooth line and may miss the points themselves. Uh, but one thing that's nice that you can do, let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Uh, oh, if I go into properties, ah, it looks like I've turned off the geography geometer. 
Let's go back and smooth this again. Apply, and then let us make this a um, dotted line. And let's make it red and make it much thicker. Notice now that our path is not actually going through all of the points. It's kind of smoothing things out between them. Um, if you're planning on showing the route and some of the key points along the way, uh, and you want to make sure that your smooth line has gone over those key points, uh, then you can always go and edit this path. Choose the node or the vertex tool. And as I move my mouse over it, you'll see that the, the editing node tool will show the original nodes rather than the curved line. Uh, so we can now mess with it to make it artificially overlap with all of the points or, or manually make it fit the, the, the important points. Uh, for example, let's say you have a lot of points, but you're only going to be showing points for a couple of key locations. Then you could go in and, and manually fix this just for those particular uh, points that you're going to be showing. Each time I'm clicking and then I'm uh, moving it. Uh, and so on down the line here. Okay, saving it. And uh, there we go. We have uh, our points. One other example that I want to show quickly is, uh, in this case, I've just drawn things on. But let's make a really simple uh, path that uh, uses an example of dates. Uh, again, I'm going to do this with a scratch layer uh, path with dates. And this is going to be a point layer. I'm going to add some points kind of randomly again, but this time just kind of four. Obviously, your path is probably going to have many poor points, but for the purpose of this exercise, let's just use a couple. Uh, I'm going to save that. Uh, I'm going to, again, uh, export this and save it as a shape file. Dates points. Uh, oops, let's put this here. Okay, if I right click on this and go into the attribute table, you'll see that we have IDs, but let's say that these points were not added in the right order, but I do have dates for them. Um, if I edit this attribute table, I could add, for example, a new field uh, and call it dates and tell it that I'm using dates. Now, when I go in and edit here, I could indicate, now in this case, the, they are in, or, in order, but if I have the, the information for these dates, uh, I could, 23, let's say it was November 1st, Number 13, 15, 23, uh, 11, 22, and 15, 23, 11, uh, 30. Okay, so now I have some points. It doesn't necessarily need to be in this order. It just so happens that that's the order uh, that I want. Uh, and I save my changes here. I now have points that are connected to each other by dates. Now, if I do the same process as I did before in the toolbox, points to path, instead of choosing the ID, which let's pretend is not correct, I can sort by dates. Because I've used the standard format that QGIS uses for dates, I don't need to give it manually a date format. This is a place where you can have your own kind of specialized date format. This is something you can look up online for more information about. We run it in the background and we'll see that it's created the route correctly. It hasn't put them in, in some weird order. That's particularly useful if you have a long list of points uh, and they're not necessarily sorted except uh, that you've added dates for each of those points.